The Special Olympics, founded by Eunice Kennedy Shriver in 1968, has the following mission. To provide year-round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, giving them continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy and participate in a sharing of gifts, skills and friendship with their families, other Special Olympic athletes and their community. In an effort to achieve these goals, Healthy Athletes was created in 1997. This program provides seven different health screenings and services at the local, state, provincial, national and world games. Data obtained from the screenings is utilized to promote the health care of Special Olympic athletes. Healthy Athletes includes the following disciplines. Fit Feet, Podiatric Medicine, Fun Fitness, a physical therapy component which assesses strength, flexibility and balance, Healthy Hearing, Audiology, Health Promotion, which is an assessment of nutrition and self-image. Opening Eyes, Optometry. MedFest, pre-participation history and physical exams. And Special Smiles, Dentistry. FitFeet is one of the newest additions to healthy athletes and was started with the assistance of the American Academy of Podiatric Sports Medicine and the Federation of International Podiatrists. FitFeet was introduced in 2002 and officially launched at Special Olympics 2003 World Summer Games. Many Special Olympic athletes suffer from foot and ankle pain or deformities that impair their performance. These athletes are not always properly fitted with shoes and socks for their particular sport. During Special Olympics competition, athletes receive foot and ankle screening for deformities and are checked for proper shoes and socks. They are provided with community referrals as needed and athletes, coaches and families are educated on preventative foot care. Dr. Patrick Noonan, former American Academy of Podiatric Sports Medicine President and Global Clinical Advisor. Dr. Robert Coninello, Global Clinical Advisor in charge of North America. And Mr. Martin Weiser, Manager of Regional Growth. Healthy Athletes North America work together to manage the Fit Feet initiative. Most physicians involved in the care and treatment of feet are very familiar with the impact that diabetes has on feet. Most of these physicians are quite knowledgeable about foot screenings for diabetes. These clinicians know what sorts of findings to be alert to. Lack of protective sensation, hot spots, skeletal deformities, and pulselessness to name a few. But what about the intellectually disabled athletes? What sorts of findings should the examiner be on the alert for? One of the goals of this presentation is to provide the clinician with just that information. FitFeet is simply a screening of the lower extremities of Special Olympic athletes. The primary areas the clinician will assess are the musculoskeletal, dermatological, and biomechanical with gait. The athlete's shoe size versus actual measured foot size is a significant part of the FitFeet process, as is the general assessment of shoes and socks utilized in competition. This presentation will demonstrate the process of conducting a fit feet exam on the Special Olympics athlete. The entire process will be demonstrated from check-in to check-out with an emphasis on identifying some of the conditions commonly seen in the intellectually disabled athlete. Before looking at the process, it goes without saying that working with a Special Olympics athlete is immensely rewarding. The athletes, their family, coaches, and volunteers are the warmest group of patients you have yet worked with. They express tremendous gratitude that you are involved in their program and are doing what you can to assist in their performance and enjoyment. Before discussing the Fit Feet exam itself, we need to go over some issues involving preparation. Here is an example of Fit Feet venue. However, your location and resources may dictate a different setup. Similarly, the furniture and supplies you utilize will vary, but typically most venues will include 
an indoor space of roughly 40 feet by 40 feet that includes an electrical hookup, two six-foot tables, and another two to four smaller tables are ideal and should have coverings. As will be noted later, 20 plus chairs should be adequate for the venue. Additional items to have on hand include, but are not limited to, 20 clipboards and pens, at least six Branagh foot measuring devices, two each for men, women, and children, an athlete giveaway item such as shoelaces or sneaker balls. The venue will need signage that includes a general venue ID as well as signs for each station and decorations such as balloons. Other important items include bottled water, hand sanitizer, and moisturizer cream, varied size exam gloves, and about six rolls of paper towels. If your venue will be using the MAT scan or RS scan, you must have an electrical hookup, power cord, and laptop computer. Lastly, if your venue is outside, you will want to have one or more 20-foot by 2-foot strips of indoor, outdoor carpet for the gate analysis. Necessary paperwork includes the Healthy Athlete Software Form, also known as the HAS Form, that documents the Fit Feet findings, Athlete Consent Forms, Hold Harmless Agreement for clinicians and students, Athlete Report Card Forms, and educational brochures for athletes, their coaches, and or family. Availability of these items for the Fit Feet event will have been checked prior to the event. All clinical participants should have signed the Hold Harmless Agreement, which indemnifies the healthcare provider and Special Olympics Incorporated from all liability, loss, expenses, or claims for injury or damage that are caused by or that are the result of their neglect or intentional acts of omission. Additionally, all healthcare providers recruited for are volunteering to conduct health screenings at Special Olympics Healthy Athletes events must have their own malpractice insurance. Because so many Special Olympics athletes are children, most clinicians must avoid wearing white coats. A more casual look, such as golf shirts and khakis, is preferred. As a bonus, Special Olympics Arizona supplies our Fit Feet clinicians with attractive teal surgical scrub style tops. The Fit Feet exams begin with check-in. The athlete and frequently his or her coach and or parent will be greeted by the volunteer and asked to fill out the top portion of the Healthy Athlete Software Form or HAS Form. Please note, the HAS ID number is not filled in at this time. The volunteer is typically a layperson, but could be a student. A query by the volunteer as to any known lower extremity problems and or current concerns can be made at this time and noted on the HAS form. On completion of the check-in, the athlete is escorted by the Fit Feet clinician to Station 1. The clinician may want to separate this area into two sub-areas. Area A would entail an overall non-weight-bearing assessment with Area B for weight-bearing evaluation and gait. At Station 1, Area A, most of the lower extremity evaluation takes place. In many venues, the examination chair will only be a couple of folding metal chairs, one for the clinician and one for the athlete. So the clinician can place the athlete's foot on their knee. For better equipped venues, a third chair at the individual exam station can replace the clinician's knee. As a general rule, about eight such exam stations of three chairs each is ideal to handle about 100 athletes in a morning or afternoon session if an equal number of clinicians are available. The clinician will first do an overall dermatological assessment. Basic assessment of temperature, texture, and turgor is followed by a closer inspection for nail pathology such as onychocryptosis, onychomycosis, or onycholysis. Keratotic lesions such as Holoma dura, Holoma mali, or intractable plantar keratosis, and verruca should be noted at this time. The clinician should be aware of excessive dryness, cirrhosis, 
and possible associated fissures versus excessive moisture hyperhidrosis and or odor bromorhidrosis and will perform an interdigital inspection for maceration and or signs of tinea pedis. Throughout the entire dermatological assessment, the clinician should always be on the lookout for ulcerations, signs of infection, and because we are evaluating athletes, hot spots and blisters. This completes the dermatological exam. While still at Station 1, Area A, the clinician will perform a musculoskeletal exam with an emphasis on the non-weight-bearing evaluation of joint range of motion of the ankle, subtalar joint, and metatarsal phalangeal joints. The clinician should be especially alert for lack of satisfactory ankle joint dorsiflexion, equinus, or significant limitations and or pain or crepitus with range of motion in the evaluated joints. For example, hallux limitus. More typically, the clinician will find overall joint laxity and hyperflexibility that is often associated with intellectually disabled athletes. In the musculoskeletal assessment, the clinician may identify structural deformities such as hallux abducto valgus, Taylor's bunion, hammer toes, brachymetatarsia, another finding rare in the general population but commonly seen in intellectually disabled athletes. The clinician should palpate for metatarsal head tenderness and or signs of intermetatarsal neuroma. The clinician should also be on the alert for conditions such as hallux varus or syndactyly. As space dictates, the clinician can move the athlete to Station 1, Area B, where a weight-bearing assessment and gait analysis can take place. As in Area A, the athlete is barefoot. Begin with a relaxed stance position. You can have the athlete first march in place to relax and to better simulate the angle and base of gait. Observe the feet for compensation of structural deformities noted in the non-weight-bearing exam as well as overall foot types such as pes cavus, pes planus, or metatarsus adductus. A gross assessment for limb length discrepancy can also be done at this time. Nearby, a runway for gait analysis should be available. It should be about 20 feet long and can be marked to aid the athlete. Have the athlete walk down the runway 20 feet, about face, and return. Repeat several times until you're comfortable with the assessment. The coach, parent, or assistant may need to hold the hand of the athlete during gait analysis to keep them steady. The goal is to identify, one, if the athlete is overpronating, oversupinating, or is basically normal. Two, if the athlete is excessively abducted, adducted, or essentially normal with about a 10 degree abducted gait. And three, if there is an obvious gait disturbance such as limping or antalgic gait and toe walking or equinus gait. Some venues may complement the gait analysis with the MAT scan or RS scan systems. These systems utilize a computerized gait analysis mat that converts a tactile force and pressure measurements to viewed color imaging of the foot forces during gait. It is accurate and simple to use and can provide additional objective data about gait. Please note, although some venues may have different clinicians present at the different stations, your venue may function more efficiently with a single clinician escorting a given athlete through the entire process. Station 2 is the shoe sock exam and shoe size measurement area. After removing the athlete's shoes, identify the size of the shoe being worn. This is the time to evaluate the shoes for unusual patterns and or extreme wear or breakdown to see if they may pose as a source of injury. You may have just identified structural or mechanical problems in Station 1, so are you comfortable with the shoes being worn by the athlete in light of those findings? For example, if you noted the athlete is a severe pronator but presents with a non-supportive and flimsy countered shoe, Part of the recommendation to the athlete would include the type of shoe that would best serve their needs given their biomechanical findings. 
such as a motion control shoe. Lastly, is the shoe appropriate for the athlete's sport? This is the ideal time to assess the athlete's socks. Are they in good condition? Do they serve the athlete's needs if the athlete has tinea pedis or hyperhidrosis? You may discover the athlete has been wearing cotton socks and would better be served wearing a sock that wicks away moisture. Remember, if the athlete you are evaluating is participating in winter sports, they should be wearing socks appropriate for those sports such as wool. With the athlete in a standing position, utilize the Branek device to measure the athlete's actual foot size. The clinician should be familiar with the Branek foot measuring device because venues utilize it to measure the athlete's foot size. It must be stated that comparing the measured foot size with the shoe size the athlete presents with is a significant component of the fit feet screening process. Note here, the pre-measuring indicator default position is with the width bar at the widest point and the arch length indicator slid back all the way, as shown here. The position allows for the easiest placement of the unshod foot, which of course would be in a standing position with equal weight on both feet. Assist the athlete in moving the right heel back up against the right heel cup. Full weight is necessary so you can make certain the foot is elongated and spread to its maximum size. In an ideal situation, feet should be measured toward the end of the day because feet are their biggest due to normal edema. Measuring the heel to toe length is as simple as noting the line the longest toe, not always the hallux, reaches. If your athlete actually has flexible contractures that if reduced, increase shoe size value, then by all means, push down in the digits and then measure. Likewise, perform this reduction if the athlete's socks are so snug as to drop the toes into a contracted position. One of the advantages of the Branach measuring device is it gives us a look not only at the overall foot length, heel to toe, that was just measured, but also at arch length, or heel to ball length. This is accomplished by sliding the concave pointer as shown here so that it conforms to the medial aspect of the first metatarsal head. Check the reading of this as this is the arch length. Determine the athlete's proper shoe size is through a process of comparing overall heel to toe length to arch length. Whichever the athlete's measurement is larger represents their shoe size. To determine width, slide the width bar snugly against the lateral aspect of the foot. You can then determine width by utilizing the athlete's shoe length measurement you just measured and line it up with the corresponding width seen here. If the shoe size falls between widths, use a wider width for a thick foot and a narrower width for a thin foot. Especially fleshy, high arched feet or splay feet may require a size wider shoe. The above process is then repeated for the left side. Be sure and fit the larger foot. All findings are then noted on the Station 2 section of the HAS form. After donning their shoes, the athlete is then escorted or directed to Station 3. Station 3 is the Education and Review of Findings or Checkout Station. Normally the station is manned by a lay volunteer, but certainly could be a student. The athlete's HAS form is collected and pertinent findings from the fit feet exam are reviewed with the athlete and their coach and or parent present. Brochures on foot, nail, and skin care may be dispensed at this time, and if insoles or orthotics are available for dispensing, this can be done as well. After a thorough review of the HAS data form, complete the prescription, screening results, or report card form as appropriate. Indicate current and measured shoe size. If the athlete's feet check out satisfactorily, mark the box that reads, Congratulations, you have fit feet, and require no further follow-up care. If certain conditions are noted on the HAS form, mark the box that reads, You have the following conditions, and check or write the conditions noted. If the athlete requires follow-up care, indicate so by marking the appropriate box. Your feet require extended treatment. Please contact the following physician for a follow-up appointment. In many venues, a giveaway such as a pedometer, sneaker balls, shoelaces, etc. is provided along with the prescription screening results report card. The HAS forms are collected and retained at Station 3 and eventually will be sent to the Special Olympics program records. 
50 clinicians may find it beneficial to meet with their team and critique the process, including flow, supplies, and ways to improve for the next event. If you are considering becoming a Special Olympics Fit Feet Clinical Advisor, you may be viewing this video to become familiar with the process of conducting a Fit Feet exam. We hope this video has been useful and greatly appreciate your interest in Fit Feet.